Hello students, welcome to the English class again. Well students, we are almost at the end of this chapter Indigo. Till now, I have provided you all four video lectures on the explanation of this chapter. And uh, today I am going to provide the last, that is the fifth and the last video lecture detailing out the explanation of the chapter. I hope students you all have gone through the previous four video lectures. I hope you have understood the explanation and uh, I have already told you in uh, at the end of all the video lectures that please clarify your doubts if there is any. Okay. So today we are going to uh, end the chapter. We will conclude the chapter and uh, we will see that how the Champaran Satyagraha, how it turned out, okay, how it shaped Gandhiji's future and how it completely changed the Indian political scenario. Okay. Okay. In my last video lecture, we have completed till indigo sharecropping disappeared. So we have seen that how Gandhiji, he was in one of the inquiry commission and through that inquiry commission, it was found out that the English landlords were creating various kind of problems to the sharecroppers, to the Indian farmers, okay, and how it was uh, brought out, okay, the facts were brought out or brought to light that that is true, that this is actually happening, okay, and as a result, what happened, the English landlords were forced to surrender 25% of the revenue back to the farmers, not only to give the refund, but um, they have also bowed down before the Indian farmers. Okay, and um, we have seen that how as time passed by this Indian sharecropping, this entire uh, what we can say the indigo sharecropping, the indigo plantation completely came to an end in India. Okay, so today we are going to start from Gandhi never contented. Okay, I have told you that uh, this chapter when you are reading this chapter because you should know how to read a chapter that is a very important thing. Okay, whenever you are reading a very long chapter like for example when you are reading a very small chapter like the last lesson okay it is a very small chapter so in that case what happened last lesson or deep water this kind of chapter these are short chapters very small chapters so you can end the chapter in one part but when we are reading a long chapter like say previously we have read with the rat trap okay or we have done the enemy hmm. or this chapter indigo okay or we have done lost spring hmm. so these chapters when you are reading such kind of long chapters it is recommendable that you divide the chapters into part okay once you divide the chapters into part what will happen that it will become very much easier for you to remember how means in which part what are, what is the main thing that that part shows <coughs> okay as an example if i tell about indigo i have already told you yesterday that indigo can be divided into three parts the first part was when rajkumar shukla um, arrives uh, in lucknow and uh, persuades gandhi to take to champaran okay so till gandhi goes to champaran that is part one of the chapter Part 2 is when Gandhi is in Champaran and all the investigation is going on and he is being accompanied by the lawyers and then the court case, then the uh, this, uh, inquiry commission until the end how the entire Champaran sharecropping business disappeared. This part comes in the second part. Second part is quite big because that is what the main chapter is about, indigo, indigo plantation. Okay. The third part is the Champaran episode okay here comes the third part today we are going to do the third part gandhi never contented himself what is the third part the third part is of course social backwardness in champaran and the champaran episode okay that comes in the third part okay uh, 
in after this video lecture in my next class i will give you a detailed description about the part wise reading of uh, this chapter it will become very much easier i am also trying to provide such kind of uh, video lecture where i will be giving part wise reading of the other chapters also like lost spring the rat trap or enemy i will be providing to you all such that it becomes very much easier for you all to understand or to read the chapter that way what will happen some long chapters also if you don't if you suppose don't have the time also to read the entire chapter though i would tell that you should read the entire uh, text very thoroughly but suppose for some or the other reason you could not then if you remember the part okay that okay this particular incident fell on this particular part of the chapter then at least you can write some answer okay something you can write and that will fetch you marks okay anyways that i will give you in my next video lecture but now let's con uh, conclude this chapter today okay let's start gandhi never contented himself with large political or economic solutions he saw the cultural and social backwardness in the champaran villages and wanted to do something about it immediately gandhi never contented he was never satisfied contented means what contented means satisfied he was never satisfied with the political or economic solution means he is not concentrating only on the political or economic solution he was when he came to uh, bihar or patna if you remember when rajkumar shukla brought gandhi to patna and they were waiting outside the house of dr rajender prasad the servants had treated both rajkumar shukla and gandhi as an untouchable do you remember yeah so gandhi that time was thinking that how did these servants come to know that gandhi is an untouchable though we know that gandhi is not an untouchable so how do the servants classify or categorize him as an untouchable so that those ideas were still there in gandhi's mind okay if you have gone through the movie or gone through the video clip you must have seen that how gandhi Uh, when he was busy with those political and economic situation he was having this official inquiry and he was uh, uh, going to the court or maybe he was uh, uh, means uh, uh, with the lawyers he was going to each and every village and collecting evidences and uh, testimonials gandhi not only was concentrating on the political evidences to be collected but he was also looking towards what towards the social backwardness of champaran okay that had really attracted his attention he saw the cultural and social backwardness in the champaran villages and wanted to do something about it immediately so he immediately wanted to change it okay change the entire entire uh, what we can say the situation the entire scenario of bihar he wanted to upgrade the people he appealed for teachers uh, sorry he appealed for teachers he appealed for teachers means he requested that if any teachers would come okay if any teachers would voluntarily come to champaran and educate these illiterate farmers because that is very much important if these farmers would have been educated then these indigo planters would not have tortured them for such a long period of time because they were illiterate they did not know how to approach okay so uh, it was very much necessary that this illiterate peasant should be immediately educated okay so he appealed so he requested that if some teachers would come okay and uh, help these villagers and as a result what happened mahadev desai and narhari parik okay these are the two devotees of gandhi they came they are very young ones they came along with what along with their wives so mahadev desai and narhari parik two young men who had just joined gandhi as disciples and their wives volunteered for their work what did they do volunteer for the work so not only these two young men but they came along with their wives to champaran and without any payment this is an extra information i am giving you these two people without taking any fees or payment from gandhi or from these poor people they gave voluntary fee service okay voluntary service of teaching to this illiterate farmers okay <coughs> right several more came from bombay pune and other distant parts of the land so not only these two people but others also came many others have also come okay uh, to give this um, to forward for their work means they came forward for their work to give education to this illiterate people okay 
so from bombay they came from pune they came and from distant lands they came devdas gandhi's young youngest son arrived from the ashram and so did mrs gandhi so who were the other person devdas uh, gandhi he is the youngest son of gandhi he also came to help out uh, the poor by giving education even gandhi's wife mrs gandhi mrs gandhi means mrs kasturba gandhi she also came to give education to the women folk especially to the women folk okay primary schools were opened in six villages so in six villages primary schools were opened so you see gandhi came to champaran for whom for the share cropping business isn't it to look into the matter of share cropping business but he didn't stop there because when he came there he saw around him what are the things that is going on around him what are the uh, social backwardness that is going on around him and the, he, he could not ignore those facts because those are the main things why these tortures and these uh, atrocities are being uh, done upon the poor farmers okay by this british so he opened primary schools kasturbai taught the ashram rules on personal cleanliness and community sanitation kasturba who is kasturba gandhi's wife okay so she taught these women and the men folk that how to remain healthy and in order to remain healthy they have to maintain the hygiene of the area okay so sanitation community sanitation cleanliness all these things are necessary and that was taught by kasturba gandhi to this uh, to these villagers okay now there is one question which comes very often okay uh, usually for two marks this question come that is what social or cultural activities means uh, what activities were done by gandhi to remove the social and cultural backwardness in champaran i am repeating the question what activities okay were done to remove the social and cultural backwardness of champaran district what activities were done to remove the social and cultural backwardness of champaran district by gandhi okay or in indigo chapter what will be the answer there are three points that you have to keep in mind please student you have the books in front of you take out your pencil and write down or mark out the three points first of all you write down the question i have already repeated the question okay and now you write mark down the answer what is the first answer the first answer is this part that is gandhi appealed for teachers so number 1 is what education the first point is education okay gandhi called for education and for this reason what happened he opened primary schools okay and who helped him out mahadev desai and narhari parik devdas and mrs gandhi okay so you will write this is the first point that the first thing that gandhi have done was to open primary school and appeal for teachers to voluntarily do the service of education okay this is number 1 okay then what comes next next comes number 2 health condition okay so after education he was he was concerned about the health condition of the people over there okay so health condition was miserable gandhi got a doctor to volunteer his services so not only teachers but gandhi also appealed for doctors okay so doctors would come for how many months for 6 months like this he never told that for a year you do the voluntary service because when they are doing voluntary service they should not be demanding any payment or fees okay so gandhi said that if there are any doctors for 6 months they will come stay here then they will go away then another for the next 6 months another group of doctors can come and give the voluntary service okay so for 6 months these doctors used to come and they provide the voluntary service okay now what did they do they have included three medicines these three medicines were made compulsory in the villages now what are the three medicines castor oil quinine and sulfur ointment these were the three medicines number 1 castor oil number 2 quinine 
and number three sulfur ointment okay now these three medicines because you see in champaran villages or the nearby villages the health condition was very bad if anyone gets sick then they have to run to either motihari or to patna and that was quite far away for any very sick people to get access to medical facilities okay so it made it made compulsory <coughs> excuse me gandhi made it compulsory that these three medicines should be available in each and every village of bihar okay now how would these medicines be affected okay or it it should be come into effect okay anybody who showed a coated tongue was given a dose of castor oil okay so anyone who was having a problem of coated tongue okay like any kind of um, uh, problem uh, with the uh, uh, what we can say with um, appetite problem or some kind of problem they were given what castor oil okay they were given a dose of castor oil okay next <clears throat> um uh, anybody with malaria fever received quinine plus castor oil and anyone else who were having problem with uh, malaria because of course those were the um, thing uh, uh, what we can say is that because mosquitoes were there and people were not very much concerned that how to reduce mosquitoes so malaria was very common at that time okay so they were provided what they were provided quinine and castor oil and uh, those who were having skin eruptions like any kind of skin problem then they were provided sulfur ointment and castor oil okay so these three medicines became very much common uh, very much compulsory okay so this is number 2 point of that question which i have told the first one i have already told you the first one is uh, of course um, uh, education okay the first point was which one education okay first point is education okay what is the second point second point is health condition medicines okay second point is medicines that became very much important or we can also say health okay so these things were important okay then what is the third thing the third thing is here comes the third thing gandhi noticed the filthy state of women's cloth okay he asked kasturbai to talk them to talk to them about it one woman took kasturbai into her hut and said look there is no box or cupboard here for clothes the sari i am wearing is the only one i have so what is the third point upliftment okay upliftment of women in the form of what in form of sanitation okay so upliftment of women in the form of what sanitation okay so this comes under the third part right okay so gandhi what happened one day he found that uh, one of the women he was she was having a very filthy state means the uh, the sari that she was wearing that was very filthy so she he gandhi told his wife that why don't you go and have a talk with that woman okay when his wife went there the woman took kasturbai to her home and said that look at my house look at my room there are no boxes there are no cupboards for clothes and this is the only sari that i have they are so poor that they can't even afford another sari so say that this is the only sari that i have so what to do okay so here gandhi had looked into this matter also that the women should be uplifted in the manner of sanitation in the manner of living in a respectable manner so these are the three activities that he had concentrated in the social and uh, cultural backwardness of champaran okay <clears throat> During his long stay in Champaran Gandhi kept a long distance watch on the ashram he sent regular instructions by mail and asked for financial accounts once he wrote to the residents that it was time to fill in the old latrine ten- trenches and dig new one <coughs> new ones otherwise the old ones would begin to smell bad so what happened gandhi had to keep a very long distance with the ashram also okay uh, so because uh, gandhi's youngest son came and gandhi's uh, uh, this one uh, wife also came here so the ashram was without any leader okay so gandhi once what happened he kept uh, a very strict watch on that uh, ashram and uh, he even instructed sitting in champaran only he instructed the ashram followers that they need to build or they need to dig new trenches okay uh, for latrine for the purpose of latrine because and the old latrine should be immediately covered up otherwise smell would come otherwise trenches would come okay right 
the champaran episode was a turning point in gandhi's life okay this is very important please underline this line the champaran episode was a turning point in gandhi's life of course it was a turning point in gandhi's life okay because this way gandhi what happened gandhi uh he had come to india in 1915 and uh, he was not uh, means yet ready to means step politically or uh, uh, do something for the country man first he wanted to roam around the country and see the problem but in in this time only when rajkumar shukla had appealed gandhi to come to champaran gandhi unknowingly only you can say put his foot forward to the political arena okay and uh, after that there was no turning back because gandhi once when he saw that he can do something for the indian people he continued he continued doing it okay so champaran episode became a completely a turning point for gandhi right what i did he explained was a very ordinary thing i declared that the british could not order me about in my own country so gandhi's champaran episode is not a kind of disobedience like i am not going to disobey um, uh, this uh, your law or i want to respect from you all because i am very much educated and i come from a very high class family no he did not do so he made a very simple point a very simple point to the british official saying that he is not going to obey okay he is not going to take orders from any foreigners okay i declare that the british could not order me about in my own country so what i am going to do in my country i have complete right complete freedom to do whatever i want in my country why should a foreigner come and tell me that do this and do that right but champaran did not begin as an act of defiance it grew out of an attempt to alleviate the distress of large number of poor peasants so it is not like a defiance like okay i am not going to listen to the british government or i am not going to listen to the law gandhi never said said that okay he only wanted to help the poor farmers this was the typical gandhi pattern his politics were intertwined with the practical day to day problems of the millions so gandhi did not stop as we have already discussed that gandhi did not stop only in the political or economic condition but gandhi also had his eye on the social and eco- cultural backwardness okay so this is what gandhi is gandhi is not like okay i am a political figure and i want to do only politically i want to become active it is not so he equally he had done many good work for the society okay and that we have seen in champaran episode so his politics were intertwined with the practical day to day problems of the millions okay his was not a loyalty to abstraction this line is very much important he was, his was not a loyalty to abstraction what is the meaning of this term abstractions you all know this term abstract <coughs> when we say abstractions you must be feeling that okay what a difficult term it is but it is a very easy term abstract you all have done it in your grammar classes like abstract noun and all those kind of thing isn't it abstract means something which we cannot touch hmm which we cannot see but we can feel isn't it like love hatred these are all abstracts isn't it so gandhi abstraction means what in that case if you can understand that one then abstraction means what abstraction means something which is related to imagination okay which is related to feelings okay which is related to emotions these are all abstraction okay so gandhi what does it mean that he was not loyal to abstraction what does it mean that means here it is said that he was not a loyalty to abstraction it was a loyalty to the living human beings okay everyone can say that we want a free india we want a free india but what is the use of free india suppose all the people of india say 80% people of india are illiterate they are backward they are believing in some kind of uh, uh, superstitious beliefs and those kind of backward mentality okay then and if india becomes free then what will happen will india progress india is with the indians whatever in the, wherever way india will go it is for the indians you remember in uh, enemy in the enemy And there was one line where Sadao Hoki's father told to Sadao when Sadao asked his father that where would these islands lead us to and Sadao Hoki's father said that wherever the Japanese would lead it them because a particular land can progress only through its people if the people are educated if the people are progressed and developed then all the country will also develop if the people are backward if the people are illiterate then country also will become backward isn't it that is a natural fact 
so gandhi says that freedom will come to people okay but then what will the freedom will happen will the people value that freedom if they are completely ignorant about uh, all the things around them okay if they are completely uh, what we can see illiterate or have a very backward mentality so gandhi says that these abstractions okay these abstractions are only for those who just shout that we want freedom but it is actually the loyalty to the living human being do something for the human being do something for the indians then only you can get freedom right see in the next line only it has been explained very nicely in everything gandhi did moreover he tried to mold a new free indian who could stand on his own feet and thus make india free okay india will become free only when these indians can stand on their own feet these poor peasants of champaran they could not stand in their own feet isn't it they had to take help of gandhi they had to take the help of the lawyers indian lawyers isn't it and only then they had uh, the courage to uh, to overcome their fear and they then understood that okay where we actually stand right so that is the thing that is we need to stand in our own feet and then only we can say that yes this is the free india and we can lead ourselves from here right early in the champaran action charles freer andrews the english pacifist who had become a devoted follower of the mahatma came to bid gandhi farewell before going on a tour of duty to the fiji islands Here we are going to meet with a new character, Charles uh, Freer Andrews. I have already given in my PPT video. If you have seen that one about Charles Freer Andrews, I have given a very short description. He was a British missionary who had come to India on the purpose of uh, converting the Indians. But anyways, he got himself as an English pacifist. Who are pacifist? English pacifist. What does it mean? Pacifist. <clears throat> pacifists are those people who are what we can say who um, understand who is against war Pac the main thing about pacifists is they are against war they don't believe in war okay so one who is not believing in war they are all uh, non violent and gandhi himself is a non violent okay now charles freer andrews was actually initially he was um, in shanti niketan with rabindranath tagore and uh, all the foreign tours of tagore and the foreign contacts of tagore was con uh, was made by charles freer and jews only okay now when gandhi went to shanti niketan not only he came in contact with jb kripalani which i have told you earlier but he also came in contact with charles freer andrews okay when andrews saw gandhi he was so means impressed with gandhi's ideas and philosophy that he became a complete what devoted follower of gandhi of the mahatma okay and um, uh, fiji island where again there were these movements were going on because in fiji islands also there are lots of indians and british were having their colonization in the fiji island also and andrews was supposed to go to fiji island uh, so before going to the fiji island he came to champaran okay to say goodbye to gandhi but before going uh, saying goodbye he told gandhi what did he tell let's see here gandhi uh, he told that he, if he he can cancel the fiji island tour if only gandhi tells him to stay back in champaran because he wants to stay back in champaran and help gandhi in the process of this champaran movement gandhi's lawyer friends thought it would be a good idea for andrews to stay in champaran and help them andrews was willing if gandhi agreed but gandhi was vehemently opposed he said you think that in this unequal fight it would be helpful if we have an english uh, man on our side this shows the weakness <coughs> excuse me of your heart the cause is just and you must rely upon yourselves to win the battle you should not seek a prop in mr andrews because he happens to be an englishman so what did gandhi's lawyers thought gandhi's lawyers thought that it would be a very good idea if andrews being an englishman himself would stay by their side and would uh, uh, help them in this uh, uh, fight with the english landlords and the uh, what we can say the lieutenant governor okay but gandhi completely refused in fact andrews was also willing to but gandhi completely refused why did he refuse why did he not want andrews to stand by their side because gandhi thought that this war okay or this movement this satyagraha or the civil disobedience movement that he was uh, doing or he was conducting in champaran is the war is the fight for justice for the indians 
ओके ही फेल द इंडियंस आर पावरफुल इनफ दे हैव दैट पोटेंसी टू फाइट अगेंस्ट दिस इंग्लिश मैन बाय देयर ओन सेल्फ दे डोंट नीड अ प्रॉप ओके दे डोंट नीड अ प्रॉप Prop means what? Prop are those like uh, a help. You can say a help. They don't need a help in the form or in the guise of an Englishman, because he is an Englishman. If this Englishman supports them, then the other lawyers thought that maybe the English landlords might uh, think that yes, these Indians are also very powerful because there are the Englishmen supporting them. But Gandhi said that no, you are powerful by yourself. Indians can stand by themselves and fight for their right. understood i hope you all have understood okay he had read our minds correctly rajender prasad comments and we had no reply gandhi in this way taught us a lesson in self reliance so rajender prasad was very impressed and he told that yes gandhi had taught him gandhi had taught all the lawyers that self reliance depending upon oneself believing in oneself trusting that i have the potential i have the power to fight for my own right and i don't need a help for another from another person this is what was very much important. important for the indian independence movement last line self reliance indian independence and help to share croppers were all bound together okay so self reliance was that that is what gandhi had taught in the champaran movement indian independence movement and help to the share croppers all these lesson came together in this champaran episode so champaran episode is not a singular episode of indigo rebellion but it is a it is an integrated effort okay combining what we can say combining um, uh, social upliftment combining cultural upliftment combining economic and political upliftment combining the help given to the uh, sharecroppers but do you think that only the villagers got the help no the indian lawyers those educated lawyers they also their eyes were also opened by gandhi through this movement so champaran episode is so important in the history of india students we have come to the end of the chapter okay our indigo chapter is completed the explanation of the indigo chapter is completed i hope you have understood till how much i have explained today and also the previous video lectures uh, please students if there is any doubt please clear your doubt and i would request you all to please go through the video lectures because these are very important hmm with the present scenario of this pandemic and all this thing it is very difficult to conduct classes like we used to do in our initial days okay sitting in the classroom and face to face yes face to face when you would uh, conduct a class that has lots of advantages okay but here also try to find out the advantages this is also giving us lots of advantages isn't it when we are doing these online classes so uh, please if there is any doubt please Uh, share it with me okay clear your doubt okay um, and if there is no doubt then also please tell in the classroom that okay ma'am the video lecture we have uh, listened okay there are no doubts uh, okay everything was okay and if there are any problems okay like you are facing while listening to the video lecture then also please say then i will try to rectify that okay in my next class of course i am going to discuss all these things in the classroom uh, because i really want to know it from your side that whether these lectures that i am giving whether it is actually helping you all out or not okay i really want to know all this hmm okay students then i am uh, closing my uh, video lecture over here my chapter explanation of indigo is over in my next class of course i'll be providing you with the uh question answers the important question answers that are there in this chapter right study well students thank you all